Well, good morning. It is um, May 12th, uh, Tuesday morning, um, about 8.03. I hope uh, your day um, is going well whenever you're watching this. Uh, sun, at least at 8.03 in Troy, Ohio, is out. So let us rejoice that the sun is out and perhaps we're done with winter in the middle of May. Uh, today we're going to be finishing uh, Philippians. Um, we're going to read Philippians 4, 10 through uh, 23. Um, so Paul has written this letter to the Philippians and he's um, he's talked to them throughout this letter about um, how to be, how to live, how to be more like Jesus, how to be these heavenly uh, this heavenly colony, so to speak, in the midst of um, a Roman-controlled colony, uh, reminding them of who their Lord is, who they serve, what kingdom that they're a part of, and all of those sorts of things. And so yesterday we um, we talked through and read through Paul focusing on um, the mindsets that we have, like how the war of the mind can, can be difficult. Um, it can even be a struggle, but it, uh, you know, he, he taught us to, to rejoice and to not be anxious and to use prayer, um, or well, to pray, give thanksgiving, and um, let God kind of help us out in all of that. And so, um, today he's going to finish this letter uh, to the Philippians. He's going to say um, some things that um, that we probably need to hear. Um, usually, as in Paul's letters, it's sometimes, you know, tell so-and-so hello and tell um, them I said hey and you two behave, you know, that sort of stuff. But there's a little bit of, um, there's some stuff that we can take away from this. So in Philippians chapter 4, verse 10, Paul writes, I rejoiced greatly in the Lord that at, that at last you renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content, whatever the circumstances. And so Paul just starts out and saying, more or less, I think that this is kind of him just going, okay, I'm glad you're still concerned for me. <laughs> Thank you, because uh, remember, he's in, he's in prison. Um, but when someone is in prison, uh, probably a difficult way to get letters to them, get messages to them. Um, and so... Paul says, I'm not saying that because I'm in need, um, and, that, and not that because you um, weren't concerned, uh, but that you just didn't have an opportunity to show it. And then he says, and um, this is going to be some kind of the meat for us today, he says, I'm not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content, whatever the circumstances, um, before we even go any further. Like all of us, I think, are, are in that mode, well, or we should be. Um, I think my camera can't see, but I think I'm on day, yeah, um, I'm on day 50 today. Um, and some of you are on longer than that. Um, and so Paul says, uh, for I've learned to be content whatever the circumstances. And in verse 12, he says, I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. And I have learned the secret of being content in any any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. So he's, he knows all of these feelings. I mean, he's been in jail. Um, prisons, I mean, he's under house arrest, which is easier than a normal prison, but um, I don't, but Paul has had a history of having bad things happen to him for the cause of Jesus. I mean, he's been shipwrecked. He has uh, been beaten almost to death. He's been stoned and left to die. He's been in jail. Yeah, all of these things have happened to him. Um, so he knows what it's like for the, for not, for it to be hard. You know, he says that, he says, I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation. And Paul of all people has probably been in most situations that are bad at this point. And then he even goes as far as saying whether well fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. But then he says this, this verse that uh, is familiar um, to a lot of us. It says, he says, I can do all of all this through him who gives me strength, who Christ, who gives him strength. And um, we're probably familiar with this passage. 
um, but we're probably not familiar that it's connected to verse 12. Uh, a lot of times, um, I even remember when I was growing up, I would hear, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And I would think, well, that means I can run a mile. Or I would think, that means I can do X, Y, and Z. Um, and I don't doubt that Jesus can do all of that with us and even for us. Um, but there's a connection here. And the context is, is that in obedience, we can make it through anything. As Paul was obedient to Jesus and the calling that Jesus put on his life as he met him on the road to Damascus, um, Paul has suffered and been through a lot. He's, as I already listed, all of the things that he's been through. And he's finding himself, he's finding the secret to being content and all that is just to, to be obedient to Jesus and that Jesus will give him the strength to make it through this. And uh, I believe that that's what's happening, hopefully, for us, is that through this pandemic, we have um, felt like we're under house arrest. Um, for some of us, we've been in want and we've been in need. Others of us have been in plenty. Um, however, the uh, we find contentment. Not because of what we have, and not because of our situation, um, not because we are free to travel around or get a haircut. Um, by the way, just shaving it is a pretty good way to beat pandemic haircut problems. Um, but we are we're content because we're relying on Jesus for strength, um, and Jesus provides such strength. Um, and that and that's a and that's a challenge uh, maybe for some of us today that that life has not gone the way we wanted it to over the last 50 days right or 50 plus days none of us went you know what i hope i do in 2020 hope i get locked down hope i get locked down with my family or by myself i hope i get I have to worry about my job i hope i uh, have to worry about whether I will ever see toilet paper again. Like all of those things, none of us went, you know what, I hope that's what we had to do. Um, but here we are. And Paul probably didn't say, you know what, I hope I get thrown in jail. I hope I get shipwrecked. I hope that these people beat me. I hope that they stone me. I, you know, he was along for the ride because he was obedient to what Jesus asked him to do. And for us, um, we hopefully are going to be obedient to what we're called to do. And we will know that in the midst of that obedience, in the midst of doing what Jesus has asked us to do, we can do all things through Jesus, through Christ, who gives us strength. We can make it through a pandemic. We can make it through whatever it is. I mean, for centuries, uh, Christians have made it through a lot of really bad situations. Um, they rely on... Um, relied on Jesus for that. Um, so in verse 14, just finishing up this letter, he says, Yet it was good of you to share in my troubles. Moreover, as you, as you know, as you Philippians know, in the early days of your acquaintances with the gospel, or your acquaintance with the gospel, when I set out from Macedonia, not one church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving except for you. So Paul's just kind of laying out that the Philippians were the ones who helped him financially on his uh, on his missionary journeys. He says, For even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent me aid uh, more than once, and when I was once when I was in need. Not that I desire your gifts. What I desire is that more be credited to your account. So he's just saying, Wait, listen, I'm so appreciative. You, I'm not asking you for more things. But thank you for being generous. Thank you for giving. Thank you for allowing um, Paul's ministry to continue because of their gifts. Um, and then he says, and he's saying, and I want it known. I want more credited to your account. Like I want people to know what you did and how you helped me. And then verse eighteen, he says, I've received full payment and and have more than enough. I am amply supplied. Not that I have received. Now that I've received from Epaphroditus, man, their names, uh, the gift you sent. 
They are a fragrant off offering, an acceptable sacrifice, pleasing to God. And may God and my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. And then he finishes it off with this. Greet all the God's people in Christ Jesus. The brothers and sisters who are with me send greetings. All God's people here send you, you greetings, especially those who belong to Caesar's household. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you in spirit. Be with your spirit. Amen. So Paul finishes up this letter um, with a, a great reminder of how to be content in any situation, which is just to rely on Jesus and be obedient. Um, What's interesting there at the very end is it's almost like he slips it in, um, is that Paul's having an impact on, uh, on Rome at this moment. Like he says, he just kind of slips it in there in verse 22. says, all God's people here send you your greetings, especially those who belong to Caesar's household. Um, Paul's making these inroads in the Roman community and, um, as is the church in Rome, but um, it's very interesting that we, we see that there are Christians in Caesar's household. And so um, as we look at this book, four chapters, um, some really good stuff for us to chew on, for us to wrestle on, uh, wrestle with. And I, mean, I think today the, the wrestling match that we have, um, maybe the blessing and maybe the rejoicing we have is um, that we have been content. Um, and maybe if we haven't been, if there's been moments of that, maybe it's just time for us to spend some time with God this morning and just say, God, how can I be more content in this situation and the situations to come? Because um, we are well aware, or we should be at this point, that we have no idea what's coming tomorrow. Um, but if we can be solidly locked into Jesus and um, to God's faithfulness and who he is, then we can overcome anything. Anything that gets thrown at us, we can overcome. And so um, let us find a way to be, be content in all things. Um, let us be obedient so that we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. Let me pray for us today. Um, God, we thank you, uh, particularly you're in Troy, for the sunshine. Um, God, we pray for warmer weather. Uh, so that we can at least be out in our yards. Um, God, I pray today that you would help us be um, content. Um, that we will feel content in our situations and what with, with what we have. Um, that we will remember that uh, contentment is founded upon um, serving you, loving you, and being obedient to you. That through that you will, um, through Jesus, give us strength to make it through. God, we are thankful for the strength that you've given us already. We're thankful for the ways that you have worked in our lives um, to help us get through these 50 plus days. God, I pray that today we will just think about the contentment that we have or we, can't, we could have and that you will strengthen us through um, us being content. God, we love you. We thank you for Jesus and uh, we just pray a blessing over uh, the rest of our day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, for those watching uh, live, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, for those of you who will watch us later, hello and then uh, goodbye. We will see you tomorrow at 8 a.m. Tomorrow we're going to start the book of James. Um, James is a ultra practical book that um, will have lots of stuff for us. So just like we're going to read two lines and then we're just going to pump the brakes and start uh, <laughs> digging into a couple lines. So um, I have no long, I have no idea how long that's going to take us, but I am excited for it because I love the book of James. So with that, I hope you have a blessed day. Um, be content and uh, we will see you tomorrow at 8 a.m.